Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. It's a lovely summer's evening here in the Peak District and it's really quiet other than the, the buying of sheep. I think even the trains are on strike so it's been very, very quiet indeed. Uh, this video is a first look at a new bike that I've bought. Now, some of the bikes I've got aren't particularly practical. Uh, my CB1000R is thoroughly enjoyable to ride. I love that silky smooth Japanese 4. Uh, from the 2015 Fireblade, but it's a naked bike and somebody thought, I know, let's make a Fireblade without a fairing, so less wind protection, and let's drop the gearing because there's, nobody's going to go as fast, but it will accelerate even faster. And it is great fun to ride, but it is terrifying at times as well. Uh, the bike that I've just bought really is probably even less practical than my CB1000R. And though this is this could be a suspenseful build-up, um, You'll have probably seen the title of the video and I'll have put a, a photo up of it as well. So you kind of know what it is. And this is it. This is my new bike and it is a 2022 CCM Spitfire 6. Now these bikes are all based around a 600cc single. Um, all the CCMs are fairly similar but they style them differently. So they do a bobber, they do a flat tracker and various others. So this is what I saw at the bike show in Birmingham uh, for many years. Whenever I've seen these bikes, I've always admired the engineering on them. And one time I got as far as putting a deposit down and then got cold feet and cancelled my order. However, this time put my deposit down, stuck with it, and here in August is the bike. So in this video, I'm going to give you a very close look at it, point out a few of the little features and things that are on it. I'll also start it up so you can, you can hear it. I know that never works terribly well on videos, but I'll give it a go anyway. Uh, so where shall I begin? So the thing with these bikes is they're not made in, in large numbers. They are quite configurable. It, it does fall slightly short of full custom because you basically buy one of their bikes and then you can change bits and pieces on them. So what I'll talk through is what's on this bike, uh, give you some close-up view of some of it, and hopefully this will give you enough of an overview before I take it out for a ride. So the bike itself is the Spitfire 6. Now this one is actually the, the stealth edition. So what that means is that it's got this sort of bronze anodized frame that you can see through here. Uh, now this is a steel frame. They did make a concept bike with a titanium frame, uh, which then proved so popular that they're actually making it. Uh, up on the tank, it also has this, you probably can't see it terribly well on the camera, uh, this paint job, which is uh, sort of a, a bronzy color underneath the black. And then it has this seat which has got yellow stitching on black. And then all over the bike, there are uh, just sort of anodized pieces, just sort of all the bodywork. So all the other components like this rear, rear hugger, you know, that on there together with the carbon fiber. And then if I come around the front, even under here, the headlight cowl has also got this sort of gold and bronze look going on. There's a few things I added from the options catalog, like this mini screen. Uh, I know it doesn't make much difference, but it might help a little bit. The standard fuel caps they come with are like a plastic round thing and actually these Monza fuel caps they do, I just think they look, they look great and just really nicely made. Lovely click sound as it shuts. It has bar end mirrors, which I know uh, are tend to look better than they are to use, but actually I think these are all right. They do, the bars are that wide that you do get a good view uh, past your elbows. Um, I then have some slightly different uh, levers that are on it, both left and right. So one thing that the bike has, which I didn't order but they put on anyway, thank you very much CCM, is these double discs at the front. Now the bike uh, that I ordered actually just came with a single disc with uh, the Brembo calipers. Uh, however on this one they've put the, the, the twin one on. The bike itself only weighs 140 kilos I think, so it doesn't really need that much stopping power at the front, but I guess now that it's on uh, I'll certainly use it. The bike also has carbon fibre all over it, so on the front mudguard, you can just see it in there. Now if we come down this side of the bike, you can see the engine casing here, also in carbon fibre, and the, the belly pan underneath there, which you can probably just about see in there. And then as I come along towards the back, it has a carbon fibre rear hugger there. It also has a carbon fibre chain guard, and then even this number plate holder uh, is carbon fibre, and that comes up to the back. And again, it's got this... Uh, carbon fibre piece here above my number plate, my Peak Motorcycles 2022 CCM licence plate. A couple other things to mention, so first of all 
As you can see, I have this Olin's adjustable suspension. That was an option for the rear. They do do an Olin's fork as well, but it is handsomely priced. And actually the Mozochi that's on there, I think is pretty good. Uh, just coming down, I've also got some um, billeted uh, pedals, both left and right. And of course, a little bit more carbon fiber in there for the rear master cylinder cover. And of course, a carbon fiber engine cover. Coming out to the front, I think that's nearly everything. Uh, yeah, there is this, this cut aluminium radiator guard. Not sure that's really needed for the sorts of weather that I'll be going out in, but good to know that it's there. So that's kind of it really for a walk around the bike. Hopefully that's given you a good idea about the sort of fit and finish on this thing and why I think the engineering on these bikes is, is great. You know, there's, there's so many bikes out there which look, look amazing, but they are mass produced. Uh, you know, you see a lot of them around. You really don't see a lot of these CCMs out on the road here in the UK. Um, when you do, they always attract a bit of an audience. Um, I've kind of bought it for me to ride around the Peak District, but I expect it will attract some attention. So that's the good stuff. Um, there's a few things that I have noticed already uh, that I'll just point out. So first of all, uh, with these bar end mirrors, they look great. But what it does mean is that I have in here, I have a missing mirror socket. And then on this side, the mirror thing is actually wedged up underneath the throttle cables. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this off and invert it, put it on upside down and then put a blanking plug in. On this side, I think I'll either put a blanking plug in just to tidy that up a bit, or I'll probably put a ram mount uh, for use with a, with a camera on there. At the back end, I did actually order a side mounted number plate bracket, but I think those are a bit, um, well, not, not looked upon favorably by the authorities here in the UK. So even though there is a mounting point for it to go on uh, just here, I think they do have to leave the factory uh, with the rear plate on. Also, there is an indicator within this integrated brake light, but they're not terribly bright in sunshine. Uh, whereas the, the big ones actually on the, the license plate at the moment, uh, they are. So I think I probably need to look at moving those up if I am gonna take this, this uh, rear mud guard off and move the license plate to the side. Um, one thing I have noticed as well is this, this side stand. Side stands are very useful. They stop bikes from falling over. Uh, on this bike, I think they call it a suicide side stand, much like on a, on a trials bike or even some, some motocrosses that have them, where as soon as the weight is off the side stand, it flicks up. So this is good to remember if you're standing on the wrong side of the bike. The other thing as well, and I can't really show you it now, but if you can imagine it, when the side stand comes up, the end of it is right behind the exhaust there. So it does seem to get quite hot. So I found the only way really to get the side stand down is to turn the engine off, get off the bike, and then push it down. It is definitely form over function. Um, a lot of bikes these days, in fact, every other bike I have has the kill switch somewhere around here. Uh, on this bike, the start switch and the kill switches are here, listed as fire and kill, which is funny. Um, the problem with that is actually reaching them when you're trying to start the bike up or stop the bike. I mean, it's easy enough just to reach across and do it, but if, you're, if you've stopped on the front brake, you then have to stop, switch to the rear brake um, and hit the, hit the kill switch to do that. Uh, I've kind of got used to, <clears throat> on my CRF 300 rally, I almost got used to just leaving it in gear and putting the side stand down. However, this bike also does not have a, a switch on the side stand that will kill the engine. So you really do have to stop it there or you have to stop it with the ignition fob. So one thing you might have noticed with the bike is that there is nowhere to put an ignition key. But around on this side, uh, there is this cover, and when I take that cover off, there's a, a key, uh, a keyhole there, which is for the steering lock. But frankly, the bike weighs 140 kilos. Uh, you could lift it up just on its own, so I'm not sure how effective that would be as a security device. To actually start the bike and to turn the ignition on, instead, uh, it uses a, a RFID tag, which looks like this. You can just about see that. And to start it, there's a little tab underneath here, there and I just tap it on there. And then the bike comes to life. There we go. Now, now that that's on, I can give you a look at the front. It's got this super bright LED headlamp on there with a daytime running light. And if I come around the back, you can also see the under seat, the under seat integral uh, brake light and rear light, which I think does look, does look pretty cool. 
So with the indicators or, or turn signals on, you can see that the, they've got these sort of motion ones at the back and then another one underneath the seat. Now it is almost twilight here now, so they look nice and bright, but trust me, in full daytime, full daylight, especially when the brake light is on, the one at the back of the seat is a little bit tricky to see. Uh, just coming up to the to show you what the dash looks like, uh, it's, a, it's an LCD dash, it does look a little bit old-fashioned against uh, these modern day uh, LED sort of TFT screens, but nevertheless it's got all the useful information that's on there. Um, it does have these indicator lights around the outside, you can just see the, uh, the neutral light on there. Um, in daylight those are actually quite difficult to see, uh, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. So that's it, that is a very quick look around the bike. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up. Now bear in mind that most microphones have an automatic gain control, uh, so they will turn it down. Um, it is pretty loud, this is with the baffles in. Um, I guess it passed the type approval, so it must be fine for that, but I find it quite noisy. I can't imagine what it's like with the baffles out. But nevertheless, uh, I'll give it a go and I'll try and film it and hopefully it will give you an idea for how it sounds. Uh, I had put a picture of it up on Instagram when it arrived and one of the questions somebody asked me was, yeah, how does it sound? So here goes, let's see how this works. In an attempt to try and record how this sounds, I've put one of my little Rode Go 2 microphones just clipped onto the chain guard there. Bearing in mind there are two exhausts, there's this one here and then there's another one on the far side. But unless I put two cameras up and honestly I don't think that adds a lot of value. I'm now just going to start it up uh, just where it is. Here we go. Show you from there. Oh, there we go. The side stand going up. And yeah, this here, it, it's not completely cold. It has been warmed up just to drive it out here. And also, I'm not supposed to rev it above I think 5,000 RPM during the running in period. So I'll just let the engine warm up a little bit, and I can give it a few more revs, and you can hopefully get a feel for how it sounds. There you go, actually from that angle you can see the problem uh, with the side stand here when you're actually sitting on the bike. Uh, the exhaust gets pretty hot unless you want to, uh, well, melt your boots. You kind of have to put it down first and then rock it back. So that's it, that is my short first look video at my new CCM Spitfire 6. Uh, I'm just so much looking forward to riding this. I have been out for a few cheeky rides already just to really just to have my first go. Uh, I hadn't ridden one before I bought it, which is a little bit reckless, for which I can only apologise. And I'm absolutely delighted that, that riding it was a hoot and it just did bring a smile to my face. So I'll do a video of riding it called a first ride, even though it's uh, not really the first ride, but I'll certainly take it for a run around the Peak District, show you some scenery and show you what it's like out on the road. Hope this has been interesting and useful. If it has, maybe I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.